Hello, everyone. My name is Heather Hurt, and I am here with the NRW, where nerds rule the world. Today, we are with Ian Hanlon. How are you today, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. We've actually been planning on this for a couple of months. Good things yeah. are happening now. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's been a, been a crazy been a crazy summer and a bit of a fall, but here we are. Hopefully, hopefully this uh, good news keeps going. Yes. <laughs> So Ian, um, tell, tell the audience about yourself. I of course have your, have your, you know, profile and everything, but tell people who you are and what you've done in your own words. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a voice actor uh, based out of Vancouver, Canada. I'm originally from the East coast of Canada from Halifax. And then, uh, after college, me and a bunch of buddies came out here to take a swing at the film industry and, uh, ended up, uh, finding the voiceover world, which wasn't really something that I had put much thought into, but then the more I thought about it, the more I realized, you know, that's kind of what I'd been doing the entire time. Uh, and it was a really, really good fit for me. And so I've spent the last uh, 14 years as a, as a voice actor in Vancouver, and I've gotten to work on a whole bunch of really cool, strange, exciting, bizarre stuff. So it's been, it's been a ride. <laughs> a lot of kids shows, a lot of kids shows up. Yes. Out. Yeah. Yeah. We do a bunch of that out here, which is a ton of fun. Um, your most recent one is Sonic Prime on Netflix. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's 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 the big one at the moment, which has been a, a ton of fun getting to be a part of uh, a legacy project like that with characters that everybody's familiar with and everything. Can you tell us about who you play in the show? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm Shadow the Hedgehog, who's kind of like a, a, a dark reflection of the, the ever optimistic Sonic the Hedgehog. He's a bit more of a curmudgeon and a bit more... Uh, to the point, a bit more of a Batman, if you will, to Sonic's Superman. Uh, and uh, that's been a ton of fun getting to play that sort of counterpoint character. And I also got to play Big the Cat, which was uh, a nice surprise, too, that uh, that came along at the beginning of uh, of the show. They said, well, would you also be interested in reading for this other character? And I said, OK. And they said, he's kind of like Norm from Cheers. And I said, OK. <laughs> and so that was uh, that was how we went. Uh, into that and so i got to sort of bookend every episode with either doing like the really moody guy first and then the really bright happy guy at the end or the other way around so i always got a a nice uh sampler every time i got to go in on that one so then so you got to, you do get to play shadow have you seen all of the uh the tidbits that are being released for sonic 3 yes i saw that the other day that was uh it's so funny whenever because now my phone has just decided that anytime anything Sonic comes up, it comes straight to me. So that blew up just like his shoes and the gloves uh, and the the clapper there. That was really, really cool. So that's been great to see everybody's excitement over that third movie and and uh, just the, the, the characters in general. It was really neat to see all of this kind of having a moment. Like I grew up with a Sega Genesis and playing Sonic 2 over and over and over and over again. So uh, having it still be this relevant, you know, 30 years later is a real trip, <laughs> but it's been fun. I was going to ask, were you a fan before? Were you, were you a Sonic kid? Were you a Sonic kid? I was a Sonic kid. Yeah, we were, we were Genesis house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, so we had Sonic too. Uh, and yeah, played, played the pieces out of that thing. And then, uh, you know, Sonic and Knuckles, we got that one. And then, uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to get like a, was the Dreamcast the next one or the, w w once Sonic went 3D, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. we didn't have those systems anymore. And so I sort of drifted away in that sense, but uh, it's been really cool to come back and, uh, and and reacquaint myself. And I was very fortunate that my my partner, Caitlin Bairstow, is very familiar with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And so she was able to kind of like give me a primer when uh, a primer, uh, when the uh, when the show came through, that was that was very very helpful. <laughs> Good. So it's always important to have someone who's a, who's a little bit more knowledgeable as as your as your right hand. It's always helpful. definitely <laughs> always always ask for help if you don't know something. Admit you don't know it and ask for help. That's the, that's the best thing you can do. Or if you work for a nerd industry, just say a word and someone will someone will correct you. It's absolutely fine too. This is true. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> 
Well, let's let's kind of go away from that. Let's talk about some of your other shows. Um, you've sure. done a whole bunch of fun kid shows, uh, Stra uh, Strawberry Shortcake, Polly Pocket. You've also done some not so kid shows, uh, stuff like Sausage Party. Um, yeah. Are you? Gonna be, are you? Can you even talk about well if you're going to be on Sausage Sausage Party too? Uh, well, I I don't know anything about two about the second one, but uh, as far as the first one went, I was a beat uh, who uh, starts off by saying that he's feeling very healthy after somebody comments that this beat is sick, uh, and then <laughs> and then later in the film is seen having various acts performed on or about them. Um, my parents went to see that movie in the theater. So it was, <laughs> it was, it was again, uh, a trip being involved in that, but that was a really cool one that came through town and like everybody got to sort of go out for that. And, um, that was, uh, earlier in my career. And it was really fun to be a part of such a, have a little part in such a big thing that was like, Oh, it's in the movie theater. This is cool. This is really neat. So yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, uh, definitely on the more R rated side of my resume, but it was, it was a lot of fun. A wee bit when you're looking at things like Barbie and My Little Pony, a little bit, opposing. A little bit, a little bit more, yeah. But it's fun to flex those muscles sometimes too, every once in a while. Well, that, that's a, that brings up a, a really fun question. What would you like to do more of? You've done things like Lego. You've done things like Barbie. Um, would you like to do something a little bit more risque, as, especially as adult animation becomes more and more popular? Absolutely, yeah. That's something that we've all uh, been seeing a lot more of. Definitely has been, you know, like more mature uh, animation getting done uh, both independently and by, you know, studios and networks and um, video game work has gotten so sophisticated now too. You know, there's some of the most incredible storytelling that's happening is happening in, you know, M rated video games and T rated video games and stuff like that. They're really, really stepping up these mediums that I think historically have been sort of uh, you know, pushed to the side as sort of like children's media or something like that. And people are realizing, no, 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 these are just, um, they're art forms and you can tell any kind of story with this, with this kind of medium. So, uh, yeah, I'd absolutely love to do some more, uh, some more of that kind of stuff. Every once in a while in Vancouver, we get uh, a little, a little taste of something a bit more risque and it's always everybody clamoring. Did you get on it? Did you get on that one? Did you get to say the thing on that thing? So, uh, yeah, I definitely love to do some more of that stuff. That's a ton of fun. What about live action? Um, you you have done Shakespeare. You've done theater um, before in your past. Uh, I recently did an interview with uh, Brian Docho, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I always say his name wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brian. Don't get mad at me. Um, <laughs> he And he was saying that he's afraid to go back to theater. Uh, <laughs> but uh, do you do? Do you still do any live work or is, do you want to keep more to the voice? I mean, I think I've certainly found my my happy place in voice. Like this is this is what I really, really enjoy doing. It's the version of the work that I think I like the most. But um, I still love doing theater when that chance pops up. I still enjoy doing on camera stuff when that happens. I think similar to Brian's comment, uh, every once in a while you get the bug to do a play, and then you think it's been a while though since I've done that and on the on the one hand you worry hey hey, hey shush, shush, shush. on the one hand you worry will i be uh will i be any good still or will i be better or will i be way way worse and so <laughs> <laughs> it's the fear both uh, entices and uh and chases us away at the same time <laughs> sorry okay. nestor hey, it's okay someone in the hallway that's totally fine. Tell us about Nestor. This is one of your so uh, for, for people in our who who don't who aren't in our realm of the world. Um, we get like a profile of all the people we get to interview, which is really fun because I get to creepy creepily learn about someone who has no idea who I am, um, and they have like a little fun <laughs> fact sheet. So your your pupper dog is from Korea, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's you can hear him uh, chiming in right now. Uh, yeah, we uh, we got Nestor from a, a rescue that uh, rescues dogs out of uh, Korea and Mexico and China, and um, he came to us. We're, we believe he's part Jindo and I'm convinced part Chihuahua, based on the talkiness and uh, and personality. Uh, but he's he's a real sweetheart and he's uh, very protective, as you can, <laughs> as you can tell. Hey, you want to yeah. be heard too? Huh? Well, you know, we all just want our voice. That's all we're asking for in this world. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so uh, one question that I that I, I've, I've started to like asking, especially to voice actors nowadays, um, and I've got some incredible, incredible answers to this. Um, as voice acting has developed, um, it's not like this is necessarily new, but as it's as it's developed more and more, we're seeing um, the A-listers, you know, the big names kind of come in to uh, come more and more into the voice acting space. Um, and we, we here at the NRW really, really want like more of a, of a, a, a like a wider range um, op, uh, opportunity. I guess that's really mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Um, how do you feel? about some of these bigger stars taking over roles, um, especially when it's the same actors potentially over and over and over again, getting these roles, taking, I don't want to use the word taking away the opportunities from voice actors, but how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's it's definitely been tricky and, and we've sort of seen it kind of across, uh, across prof professional performance in general. I mean, it happens in commercials now, it happens on Broadway now, it happens in, in pretty much every medium is that, you know, movie stars or like high level celebrities can kind of, uh, you know, take their pick of the work after a certain point and work that would have otherwise historically been, you know, offered to someone who's maybe not as established or not as well known or, or something like that. It's, I think for a while, it was kind of like, oh, don't, slum it doing if you're a movie star you don't do tv or if you're a, a you don't do cartoons or you don't do commercials no 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 don't do that and now i think there's just so much money that i think a lot of these uh you know agencies and performers were seeing was like on the table and they went well you know what we could have some of that now too and so i think unfortunately what that's created is a scenario where um you know, you'll see a commercial that's willing to either spend $5 million to hire a celebrity or $500 to hire a non-celebrity for the exact same spot. But it depends, right? Um, one's worth their money, the other is not. So it, it's definitely, it's a, it's a bit of a kick in the pants, but, um, you know, it, it's been that way for a while. I'd like to see more I understand why they want a celebrity to sort of prop their movie up with, come see this person, you know, but I'd like to see more of those supporting roles filled out more with people who do the work on like a regular basis, because now I think it's, it's just, uh, you're seeing more top to bottom casting mm -hmm. where it's just absolutely everybody on the call list is just like name, 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 you know them from this, you know them from that. Da, 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 da. And then kind of all that's uh, sort of left for, for voice people at the end tends to be, you know, people on the street going, did you see that? And that's it. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of a pain, but you know, it's just kind of the way the wind is blowing. It seems. <laughs> Especially with a growing, um, a, a growing animation, just in general, yeah. I know we're talking about adult, but um, it, it feels very much like the, like the sixties and seventies where we're seeing this, uh, this bloom of animation again. Um, you know, everything's cyclical. It's all coming back. Everyone wants to do animation. So, um, yeah, it's crossing fingers. We get it. We get everything a little bit more rounded out here pretty soon. Um, I'm Ho hoping so. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's talk about almost the same thing in a different way. The um, We are seeing a lot of voice actors take to social media to try and get their um, to try to try and get themselves out there uh, are you on are you on tiktok are you one of those people that's trying to have fun and uh show off a little bit uh i'm not on tiktok i uh <laughs> i i see it i understand the power i recognize it but it's just so daunting and it's um uh, it just it feels very exhausting to me I get it, and 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 it, it's working. People are creating entire careers from from the ground up, from home, um, which has been incredible to see. Like when I started, you, if you even wanted to get seen by anybody, you had to come to a hub city, establish yourself enough that you could get an audition, then do well enough in those auditions that you could get the job, then do that job, then maybe someone would see you. Now you can do something at home and post it, and it can be seen. The first one might not be seen by more than a dozen people. It doesn't matter. It's still getting seen. And then the next one gets seen by more and more and more. So the the ease of um, uh, sort of getting yourself out there is is so much easier now, which I think is a good thing because there was a lot of 
there's a lot of hurdles and there's a lot of, be, be they financial, be they, you know, whatever geographical um, that were really tough to hop over for everybody. And so seeing some of those things start to, to disappear a little bit is I think a good thing. Um, it, it, I think has led to a whole lot of people uh, coming at it, which is great because like when I started again, people, yeah. knew, people knew about the work, but it was a bit more of a niche thing. Mm -hmm. And then certainly through COVID and post COVID, it's just blown up. Like this industry is huge. Everybody's like, Oh my gosh, I can do this thing. And everybody can. And in a way that is not possible with camera or, you know, theatrical or something like that is you can do voice as a collaborative medium from your home and work with people from all over. So that's been, I think, a really interesting incentive for a lot of people who were maybe curious about it to hop into it. And so that's been really cool because the community online, uh, you know, I don't participate, but I do see uh, <laughs> is, is so vibrant and so supportive and so incredible. It's, it's really, really amazing. Right. So you and you're saying that you hope it kind of stays that way, where maybe maybe even like auditions kind of thing ch changes into a more online form. Or would you do you want to keep some of it the same? Um, how, how would you like to see um, see the industry grow in the not too distant future? Because in reality, we're kind of in the future now. Oh, yeah, it's happening now. It, it's mm -hmm. it's absolutely happening. I think um, I think right now, a lot of it, it depends on the kind of work that um, that you want to be doing. I think right now, animation, studio animation is still largely um, done in the hub cities at the studios. They still usually want you to come in for the most part, unless you're like a very established person. And then they're like, yeah, you can source connect in from your home booth. That's totally fine. <laughs> Whatever you want. You know, Frank Welker, that's totally fine. That's yep, absolutely. Um but uh, I think especially for newer people, they tend to want to get to know you a little bit more. So I think for animation, it can be harder to break in purely through online. Mm -hmm. But there are all sorts of uh, independent and smaller budget stuff that does exclusively cast through online. So that's a really, really amazing place, excuse me, to get a whole lot of experience and a whole lot of, um, you know, work that you can then show. Because especially with animation, when you're first starting out, until you book stuff, there's really nothing other than your audio demo to show. Like, imagine this with picture to it. It would be so good, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And so now being able to do smaller projects online that can then give you a visual demo that you can then show that to people. I think that's an incredible tool moving forward. And so I think we will see more and more of that. And I think that's a good thing. I think a lot of people out there um, would be and are fantastic at this work. And now because maybe they're for one reason or another unable to move to, you know, pack up their entire life and move to a city to try and take a swing at this thing. They're able to do it from where they are. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's great. Welcome to our podcast where we, where we get voice actors to tell everyone else how to get into the industry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, just, no, no. It's, it's definitely an interesting perspective where we're, we're especially following COVID, we're seeing the shift in just in, in the entire entertainment industry. And it's always mm -hmm. fun to hear it from a professional's perspective. Um, so let, let's get back to you because this is what we're here. We're here to talk about you, Ian. Let's just talk. So um, oh. you are a best voice performance winner with the uh, UBCP um, mm -hmm. and you've been nominated for other awards. Um, you what are your some of your favorite performances you've done? Um, and they don't have to be the award-winning ones. They definitely do not. Mm. Um, I really enjoyed doing the Purple Pie Man on uh, Strawberry Shortcake. That was a lot of fun because it's very big and broad. And I remember Strawberry Shortcake when I was growing up. And I, again, it's another one of those. Any Anytime you get to do a character that you remember from when you were little mm -hmm. and it comes around again and you get to take a swing at it and put your own kind of... Uh, spin on it is really cool and that one i remember going in i had auditioned for the um the original pilot when the show was kind of like a different it was a different take on the show and we recorded that and then they kind of went away and they reworked the show and then like 13 months later i got an email going hey that show's back and they're keeping they want to keep you on as the pie man they've changed the show and it's like the 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 angle on it is different now but they want to keep you so that was cool 
And uh, I said, do they want me to re-audition? Do they want me to change it? They said, no, 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 keep it just like you did it. <laughs> and I said, okay. Because I had based it on a, a, a version of Algernon from Importance of Being Earnest that I had done in college. And uh, I just thought he should be this, this very erudite kind of just like thinks very highly of himself kind of person. And uh, I remember when we were doing the, the show, the pilot in particular, um, we'd do a take and I'd go pretty big. And they'd be like, that was great. Like, can you do even more? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can, I can go bigger. And they're like, yeah, 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 go bigger, go bigger. I'm like, okay. And then we did another one. They're like, that was great. You, can you go even bigger? I'm like, yeah, I got the, okay. And so we kept like getting it to be like, and so I got to really, really swing for the fences on that one. And that was really, really fun. Just getting able to like totally turn the knob to 11 and just go. Um, he was a ton of fun. I really, really liked uh, doing Sunburst on My Little Pony. That was a really, really fun one to do too. Because just the tone of the show and the that character's sort of um, awkwardness and shyness was really fun to get to play. And, and he's much, much higher in my register. He sits way up here. And so it was nice to get to do that. And oftentimes when I meet uh, fans of Pony specifically be a little thrown by my actual speaking voice being quite a bit lower than that. Um, the first pony convention that I ever went to, they introduced me and they were like, any sunburst here he is. And I was like, hi everybody. And they went, what? What's it? So it's not quite what we expected. Um, so that was, that was really fun too. And getting to do anything uh, with Marvel uh, has just been great. We got to do a bunch of Lego stuff. Um, I got to do a short uh, that had John Mulaney on it as Spider Ham. That was really fun. I remember uh, that one. Yes. Yeah, that was that was. I got to be the uh, the announcer who's talking to him through the radio, and so that was a lot of fun getting to play around with that. Um, yeah, there, there there's something in every single job that makes it makes it special. But yeah, those those are some of the really fun ones. You know, you are you are like the third or fourth person that I've spoken to that has pointed out My Little Pony. That is, yeah, it was a big one. <laughs> Y'all must have it must have been a great show. I'm I'm not there. Pony heads, <laughs> y'all had something both in front and behind the camera. Apparently, guys. Uh, oh yeah, it was uh, it was uh, it was a movement. It was a time. It was a movement. <laughs> um, what would you? Uh, let, let's look into the future. Um, we we kind of talked about what you would like to do, what you would like to see, but what would if you could really like pinpoint something that you haven't done before, what would you like to, or something that you would just really, really love to do more of? What would you like mm -hmm. to do? I'd love to do more narrative, uh, narrative driven video game stuff. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, a lot of that is getting done as like motion capture now, and we're mm -hmm. getting more of that in Vancouver. Um, so that's been really, really cool to see. Um, just the, as I was saying earlier, there's the level of storytelling that's happening there is so sophisticated now and it's so good. And you can tell these very in-depth stories over hours and hours and hours instead of, you know, half an hour or 90 minutes or five minutes or two minutes now or, you know, 30 seconds. Like these things are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So doing something with that scale to it and that much time to tell a story, I think would be really, would be really, really cool. So yeah, one of these days. Okay. All right. Video game creators out there. The, the three of yeah, you call on me this up. channel, just... Just, <laughs> I'm available. Call me. <laughs> so, okay, this this literally just came to mind while you were pulling out some voices. And this is just me being an absolute moron in, in this in this industry, in this part of the industry. Um, <laughs> tell me, how do you remember them? Because that's, that's something that a lot of people um, who have never worked in acting in general don't truly understand how um someone could just pull that information out even after many many years there are um there was i can't remember which uh, book narrator came back and he was able to pull out a voice he used in some audiobook that he he did in like the 60s and like the early 2000s um so mm -hmm. tell me how do you remember these voices that you've used sometimes over a decade ago i mean part of it is just muscle memory where you just you you think that person and that's just the voice that comes out. Oh yeah, they're bah, bah, bah. they're they're like this or he's like that or he's like that or they're like this or and then you can just kind of something about the way that you found the voice and performed it just immediately pulls you back into it. Another big one for me is just posture. 
is huge. Like when, when you're in the booth doing it, like we did it, we did a, a Mega Man show called Mega Man Fully Charged and I was fireman on it. And I remember other actors telling me, it's like, you know, whenever you do fireman, you just stand there with your fists clenched like that, like the whole time. And that was just where he sat. He was fireman and he sat like that. And that's just the way he sounded. And it just helped me get there. And he was flat on his heels. Like he never stood up on his toes. He was just buried. And so sinking into that just puts it on right away. Like the purple pie man's like this all the time. So he's got like one hand crying. He's just like, it's just the way he is. He doesn't have time for any of this. And then I did uh, uh, read the bird on Angry Birds Summer Madness. And he was just like this the whole time. And his shoulders were right up by his ears. And it's just the whole time. He's just talking like this. And everything's just really frustrating. And so when you get into those shapes, it just kind of helps push the sound out in that way. And it helps you stay in it. It helps you not drift. Because when I first started, the very first job I ever did or I ever booked was uh, I did a really, and I've told him this, I did a really, really bad impression of Scott McNeil's Waspinator from Beast Wars. It was just like a not very good impression and I booked a job with it. And I couldn't sustain the impression for the, I couldn't sustain the voice for the length of the show. So over the course of the show, the voice just drifted. So it started up here and he was very like this. And by the end of the show, he had become Orson Welles and he was very down here and the whole thing had just slid off a cliff because I didn't know then that you need to be able to, and I didn't know how to keep it. I could do it for a second, but I couldn't keep it. And so uh, body language and physicality really helps a lot of that for me anyway. <laughs> are you, are you other, other than the position, are you a very physical actor? You, um you, you said you want to do some, some motion, uh, some like some motion in, in video games. Are you a very physical actor when you do voices? Yeah, I think you have to be. I think, you know, the, a big mistake that a lot of people, myself included, make uh, when they're starting out is they just stand stock still because, especially because you, you're in a fishbowl and people are staring at you. And so you don't want to be, why would I be moving around? They'll think I'm weird. No, move around, do whatever you need to do. If you're punching, throw punches. If you're kicking, I'm kicking things, jumping, like all of it. So that was, I did, I did a thing recently where I had to get beaten up. And uh, I had to come home afterwards and just like take a nap because I was so sore from just like, and I wasn't like hitting myself or anything, but just like throwing yourself into all of that stuff just to make it work. So you're not just going, uh, 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 you like, you have to really kind of, uh, like it's got to, you've got to get yourself there. So um, yeah, physicality in the booth is definitely something that I uh, practice and preach. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Oh, uh, so so students of voice acting take notes of everything that you heard here. Uh, <laughs> Ian, if people want to follow you, uh, follow you, follow your career, um, maybe ask you some questions. Where can they reach out to you on the socials? Uh, I'm on the platform formerly known as Twitter uh, uh, at uh, at Ian Stewart Hanlon, and I'm on Instagram at at Ian Hanlon, and I'm on Blue Sky is something that I can't remember. I can't remember offhand right now, but I'll post that on my Twitter. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm usually kicking around saying something about my dog. <laughs> That's usually most of my content. D dog fans get at him. Do it. Get, yeah. You're not going to want to miss this. <laughs> and make sure to follow us right here on the NRW. Um, you can subscribe, do all the things like all the things are, they're down there somewhere in the description. And we want to thank you. We will talk to everyone soon. I guess.